Hi, this is your host Sapin Bharatiya for State of Energy and today we have with us Nicholas Huning, co-founder of Sieta Energy Flexibility. Nicholas, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks. Yeah, and today we are going to talk about Flex Measures. It's an intelligent EMS for energy flexibility. Uh, but before we talk about this project in general, can you also talk a bit about, first of all, what is the company all about? What do you folks do? Yeah, we Saita Energy Flexibility are a small startup with the roots in uh, academic research about smart grids. So both co-founders met there. It's, in a, it's an institute in Amsterdam where Python was actually also born. Uh, we both worked on energy in the years 2010 to 2015 uh, on the optimization of energy flexibility, which is a very crucial ingredient to the energy transition. Uh, and all this knowledge we gained there about algorithms and markets, uh, we are applying into our startups products since a few years. Tell us what is energy flexibility and why does it matter? So the overarching goal of the energy transition is of course that we use as much renewable energy as possible. So we first have to install a lot of it, but then we also have to max out how much of it actually gets to be used. Um, and because its generation is not flexible, we have to turn to everything else uh, in the power system that is flexible. Uh, demand response is a big topic there since a few years, because there's a lot of flexible demand, uh, like batteries. And now electric cars are coming into the equation. That's, that's going to be big. Uh, also electric heating. This year is becoming a very big topic, uh, heat pumps. Electrified heating is flexible, right? You can heat and then the heat is buffered for a while. So we can decide on better times for running the heat pumps. Uh, and in industry, you will also find flexibility. You can run processes uh, that are needed to produce something, manufacture something um, at different times, sometimes. Now, there might also be heating involved in a lot of industry manufacturing. Uh, if you pump water, if you run centrifuges, these kind of examples are very important to uh, incorporate. And now I'm, I'm getting to what we are doing. Um, you need to make decisions here about the running times of these flexible assets. Of course, uh, you could put a human there, but what we really want is to uh, automate this, to, to make some smart decisions about these best running times for the flexible assets, having to do with... Uh, uh, you know, for instance, market prices that can steer these decisions, uh, other examples. And then we want to automate this with software. That's, that's what we are doing. When you talk about flexibility, we were like more or less like talk about the change in consumption. But the fact is also more and more people are installing solar roofs. They, we are also producing energy. So we are also putting uh, you know, electrons back into the grid. Uh, so we have to install a smart meters, things like that. So how does that also change? Does that also fit into the equation of flexibility here? Well, uh, it changes the equation for certain. It is unflexible, uh, an unflexible part of the equation. The sun will just shine. Um, but what I what is interesting about this, of course, is the decentralized aspect. So if you have solar panels. Uh, on your house or on your company roof. Now that can be uh, incorporated in your local decision. You can balance your own generation with your own flexible demand. Right? So solar generation on the roof goes together with your electric vehicle and your heat pump uh, that goes for domestic houses, but that goes very much the same for commercial buildings. So uh, I think it is a crucial aspect and also to help the, the network operators, of course, with these local decentralized uh, decisions. It changes the way the whole load on the grid or how much power is going where. Uh, sometimes electric companies, sometimes it happens, you know, houses are producing too much electricity and, you know, the grid cannot even handle that. So, so I would like, you know, so is it beyond the scope of this project? or uh, it is within the scope because this is also a real reality of energy sector today where you know homes and businesses are also producing electricity. Yes, we need to take this into account if we make smart decisions about uh, flexible assets. 
uh, there's a lot of island solutions, which, for instance, uh, charge your car, looking at, mm, let's say, the energy price. But of course, we need more integration with the other things that are also present, like uh, the local generation. And only then we create locally balanced solutions, which really uh, help the grid from uh, becoming overloaded. And me, myself, in conversations with uh, companies this year, I'm hearing that more often. So I, I talk to more companies who see this. Who see they? It's not about um, steering a car or uh, controlling what the heat pump is doing. It's about looking, taking a step back, uh, looking at all the assets together. If there's uh, car charging poles, for instance, outside of uh, an office building, that until last year. Uh, they installed maybe one or two for each company having offices there. And now they have 10 or 20, but they're not managed together. They're still managed one by one. So one poll for one company and uh, it's still island solutions there. And right now there's a lot of understanding that all of this has to be taken into account together. It's only a problem is who is in charge. Let's talk a bit about uh where does or when does flex measures enter the picture and what does it do? How does it work? Right. Uh, flex measures is an intelligent energy management system uh, with the, uh, a weight on being developer friendly. Um, and I see it as a decision support system for, for this problem of finding the best running times for flexible assets. Um, so it comes into the picture when you have started uh, collecting data, you, know, you need data to make decisions. You feed data into flex measures like sensor data uh, or maybe market prices, maybe weather forecasts. Flex measures can also generate some own data. It can forecast uh, some of the necessary data. But the main function of flex measures then is to uh, compute these optimized schedules and those can be then also uh, seen in the in the UI but mostly it would be uh, needed that you ask via the API of flex measures for these schedules and then you have to apply these schedules so the integration with the hardware of course uh, is always different flex measures is a smart software that most often you would use in the cloud so that's what our company is doing. It's offering flex measures as a cloud-based software as a service. But you could also run flex measures uh, locally anywhere. You can uh, self-host. It's also Dockerized. Uh, yeah, I hope this summarizes it well. Can you tell us a bit about flex measures? What it is? Uh, who created it? Where it is hosted? Sure. So uh, flex measures is. Uh, the, the uh, intelligent energy management system that we at CITA Energy Flexibility uh, wrote. Uh, we started writing it in 2018. Uh, it is a decision support system. So you feed data in about uh, assets, market prices, whether everything you need, and it can uh, generate you the optimized scheduling times for the flexible assets. Uh, we've donated it to Linux Energy Foundation, so it's now not uh, in our possession anymore. It can be used by anybody. And uh, the target audience are companies that ha have an interest in optimizing energy. This uh, ranges from, from industri industry companies that have uh, a lot of demands that might be flexible so they can lower their energy costs. Uh, it can be energy service companies uh, metering companies, microgrid operators, um, maybe wind park operators right, who want to optimize their portfolio. I hope this uh, explains who uh, the audience is. It's more on the on the edges of the energy system where these localized decisions are important. Uh, what happens with some of these open source projects? You know, even if you contributed it recently to LF Energy, the fact is that 
it may have been in production for a very long time. It may already be running in production. So can you share uh, some of the use cases or uh, you know, real world examples where it's already been used? Right. Uh, when we wrote it, we uh, used it foremost for simulations. Uh, we had a South Korean customer actually uh, who, who needed this to simulate uh, car charging and, and, and island balancing an island off South Korea, and they want to show that it can balance itself. Um, and I think this is a nice example of the, this problem being, uh, being replicated across the world. So we don't only need this in Western Europe and the US, this will come up in all the countries. And uh, since then, we've partnered with a, with a Dutch metering company, Fudura, and found some uh, customers in industry one good example here is uh, uh, water cleaning, water sanitation uh, company, and they run big centrifuges to clean water, to move tons of sludge. And there, the running times are flexible. So for them, we compute what are the greenest hours of the following day. So we, we compute the CO2 content of the grid the following day and tell them in which hours to run the centrifuges. And the final example is that we have a vehicle to grid living lab. So uh, vehicle to grid means smart charging of electric vehicles, but also the vehicle can charge back to the grid. That is uh, still a very novel concept. You need the right car and the right charger to be even able to do that. And we have a living lab where this happens. So Flex Measures uh, computes optimal charging and discharging times for the, the car and even earns the occupant money because they are on a dynamic energy contract, with, which is uh, possible in the Netherlands for domestic households. So it's a, that's a very exciting use case. As you said uh, that it's not part of LF Energy and already you know um, anybody can use it, but uh, open source is more also a lot about collaboration and contributions. So how can somebody get you know uh, started with flex measure or who would you consider a kind of ideal community? What kind of community you want to see around Flex Measures? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Community building is very important. And I think we've just started to really uh, make an impact there. So I said earlier that the, the companies we see uh, using Flex Measures uh, are probably, well, larger established industrial companies or ESCOs, but there's also a lot of startups uh, doing new things with energy new services around energy and energy flexibility. And, and we've seen some interest uh, from, from both sides. And the persons I, I think we should really be interacting with are the developers. So we see ourselves as an open source project that uh, really targets developers and tries to make, uh, make it flex measures developer friendly, e to use well-documented, uh, because that's actually uh, a super high part of the costs of energy flexibility projects. Everybody is talking about the, the intelligent parts, the, the machine learning part, uh, and that's part of flex measures. Uh, forecasting is supported uh, and scheduling is supported. But what usually the reality is that it's a, uh, I think it's an 80 20 relationship. 80% go into wiring of the software, of, of writing data models and APIs and, and making sure it works. And only 20% or less is spent on the data science. And we really want to help these developers to uh, spend more time on, on their use case, on, on the actual smart stuff they, they care about. Um, so getting started with Flex Measures really uh, I, th I, th I think should be using our getting started tutorial. I wrote a tutorial that uh, basically takes you five minutes. All you need is Docker and you can compute the optimal running times of a battery and see how that works. And it's easy to get uh, started from there and do more things. Let's also talk about one thing which is really important in today's world. We talk about uh, climate change a lot. and. All of these technology that we are building is helping, you know, a much bigger uh, challenge that we have. Everything contributes a little bit. So can you talk about the impact that 
this project will have or the role that it will play in the much larger picture of helping companies cut their carbon footprint? Um, I would say I have two, two ways I can talk about that. Uh, I, we have this example of uh, helping a bigger industrial uh, water sanitation company to uh, run their big centrifuges uh, in the hours where the grid has the, the least CO2 content. And so this is a direct impact where they can uh, report directly that they have saved CO2 without changing really much about what they do. Uh, and especially in times of, of ESG, for a lot of larger companies, uh, this is a very important thing to do. And the second angle I see is, uh, well, it's money, it's investment. If you invest in these new energy assets, batteries are the best example right now, then uh, these are still quite expensive. So you uh, really want to make the best out of that investment. And then you need to control this, uh, this battery in a, in a smart way. You need to, let's say you operate it against the spot market, you need to buy cheap and sell expensive. So that's what we do in our vehicle to grid living lab and it works pretty well. Uh, we even have, uh, I think now every week, a few hours with negative prices on the Dutch spot market. So it's, uh, it becomes quite relevant. The, the spread between the high price and the low price is, is, is becoming larger. Uh, there's new markets emerging that, for instance, that help the network operators to avoid congestion. So network operators pay you if you help them avoid congestion. And this is actually a nice link to Aliander, another uh, LF Energy member. One of the projects they have, Shapeshifter, is exactly about that. Uh, so then Flex Measures is exactly about the other side. So they provide this market protocol, and with Flex Measures, you can take part in it and you can really improve your business case while also being climate positive, of course. Nicholas, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only this project, but also uh, the larger, the, the changing landscape of the energy sector as well, and how, um, you know, energy flexibility and how you're helping with flex measure uh, with this project. So thanks for sharing those insights, and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you, Swapil. It was great to be here.